Yo, man, it's your boy Star Status Chris back with another video. Before we even get started, make sure to smash that like button, man. A lot of time and effort goes into making these videos, man. And it really uh, makes me feel good when I know that you guys are liking the content and uh, it kind of gives me that extra push to just keep working, you know. And also helps get us in that system, you know what I'm saying, with YouTube. So they promote the video, more views, and then I, you know, make more videos. That's just how it goes. So make sure to go ahead and smash the like button and go ahead and jump down in the comments as well. But uh, we're going to get into this Soldier Slim hit. This is uh, going to be a dope story, man, because I, I really admire Soldier Slim. I've been uh, on his music for a long time, and I thought he was one of them guys that really, like, didn't really get a chance to blow like he would have. But, you know, he it didn't really he didn't really get his roses to after he died, unfortunately, like most people. But he was one of them guys that was definitely going to be, like, that it guy that was going to be for uh, New Orleans. So... Let's go ahead and get into it. So Slim was like a real street guy, man, like a official street guy. Like when rappers always say like, oh, I'm really not a rapper. I'm a I'm a trapper and all this and that. Like and most of them be cap. That's what Slim really was. He was really a street guy, a real trapper, a real stick up guy. Like he was a, a real, real deal. Like he wasn't no, no, he wasn't for play, like a real stepper. Like he was really about his business, you know? And he grew up jacking and he grew up jacking and that ended up being the reason, that ended up being the reason why he ended up jacking so much and doing robbing was to support his habits. He had bad addiction problems that he developed as a youth. So most of the time he would do excuse me, like these these petty crimes and robberies and probably score like a hundred, a couple hundred or something like that. But he eventually worked his way up to really getting the drop on bigger dogs in that neighborhood and from where he was from and able to, you know, uh, hit them and, and really get a lot of uh, uh, bricks and money and all types of stuff like from his hits. Like he was, he moved, he, he ended up moving up to like some big stuff, you know, and even when he was signed to Master P, he still would go on missions. And it wasn't, I see, like some people say like, oh, he was broke and Master P wasn't giving him money. That That's not true. P was giving Slim plenty of money during his stay at No Limit. Just Slim was just, he's like, like I said earlier, just so much of a street guy where he's still engaged with the streets just because like he just was a street guy. Like it's just, it was in his nature. So he couldn't really help like the urges he had to really like like deal with the streets and like i said earlier as well like he was all like he had that the addiction problem so where do you go when you need work and all that stuff you go back to the streets so he was just real connected to the the streets at heart so he will revert back you know so that's just what it was like it wasn't like he just needed the money that's why slim was or he wasn't getting paid no he just was a street guy man and, and he did he, he had that rush like some people have that rush it's just like with anything like people have a rush to do things just because they they get an excitement from it you know so during this time you know slim met a chick that was from new orleans like a bad super bad chick man that he met and he just started smashing her, you know, like we, like we do, man. Like we just started smashing her. And she was somebody important girlfriend. You know what I'm saying? She was a a, a, a girlfriend, like a, a dope dealer girlfriend. Like she, like the guy that she was with was a brick guy, you know. So he had a lot of power in, you know, and he was connected to a lot of big people. You know, and Slim, just, you know, being Slim, you know, people going, you know, if your girl, man, acting a certain way, people going to get with her. It's just, it just is what it is, you know. So just like women do most of the time, she starts, you know, sharing the business about her guy and, you know, the stuff he got lined up and how many, you know, how much bricks he got, how much money he got and all that. And, you know, you telling this to a real stepper, like you telling this to a real dude like Slim, you know, you got to keep that in mind. You're telling that. You're not just telling that to somebody who's just going, you know, let you tell, you know, uh, what what your guy, your guy got going on. Like, you're telling somebody who's really about that action. So, Slim started to, you know, make his move. And, you know, he made his move allegedly. You know, even though Slim has passed, we still want to say allegedly and put it out there. But he allegedly made his move, and the dealer was eventually found dead. And... 
uh, instantly, like Slim was blamed for this, and he really didn't hide it. You know, like he, if you go to a lot of the records that Slim made during his time, like the like that last year of him, uh, really not in the last year, like the last like six months and like even like just the short period, he put a lot of the stuff in the music, and I'm gonna go ahead and link that and let y'all listen to the records, but he was blamed for it and he didn't give a shit. That's just how Slim was. Like he didn't care that, you know, people knew cause he was just, like I said, he was a, a official guy himself. So he didn't care if people knew what he did, you know? So the guy that he hit, his homeboy was another big dog. And I'm not gonna say who that is cause the person's still alive and still moving around, but he was a big dog. You know what I'm saying? Like he had his own record uh, label as well. And he had big artists from New Orleans. <laughs> if you can think who had big, big artists in New Orleans, he had them on there. And he was a big dog. Like you're not going to find a lot of information on this dude because he was he was in the street. And he was, you know, he was one of them. He's, you know, them older guys move a certain way. You're not like these new guys putting all stuff on the Internet. Like so you're just not going to find them. But like I said, the guy that he hit, that was his big dog. So 10K was put on Slim's head, you know, about that. Because, you know, you got to think if you're hitting somebody of a, a, a statue, you're not just hitting them. You're taking away money from them. You don't know what money they're getting together, what interest you got. So you really, you know, you might just be taking care of one person, but you also making a beef with somebody else because they attached with that person because they got business going on with them. But like I said, Slim didn't care, you know, about that. Like, he just went along with it. So one day while he was getting ready for a concert, he was coming out of his truck, just normal day, and he was ambushed and he was shot and killed. You know, and he was just, and it was in front of his mom's yard as well. And the sad thing about this whole Soldier Slim thing is, is that jury was taken off of him, physically off of him before he was hauled off to the morgue. It was people had already took his diamonds and his jewelry and chain and all that stuff. And like, that's just the crazy part. That should just tell you that people don't really care about you like that, especially in the streets, man. Like for like people that's going to listen to this, like for somebody to take jury off of a, a dead man that's looked out. For, I'm pretty sure like I don't know everything about Slim, but I'm pretty sure he was looking out for them guys, you know, supplying them with, with weed and all this stuff and taking them out and showing them different places and all that. And they was getting access, a lot of access they probably wouldn't have got if they wasn't cool with Slim. So for them to do that at that moment just shows you, man, how crazy the streets are, you know. And the person that's responsible for this it was uh, Jarrell, I think they said Jarrell Smith, and uh, he's deceased now. But that's not the person that hit Slim. And I'm not going to get on here and say who was, but the person that hit Slim is not living no more. Like, it was, that's because that's another thing I started people hearing people say like, oh, uh, why was he never hit? He was just this bad hit, man. No, it was because he didn't do the hit. You know, it was as simple as that. He didn't do the hit. The person that was responsible for the hit was dealt with. And that was the end of the story, you know, but they just end up finding him with the, the murder weapon and stuff, but people that was in the know, slim people, they know that he he didn't do that. You know what I'm saying? Jarrell and Slim was actually cool, so none of that is true. He just took credit for it, like a, a lot of people do in the street. They take credit for work that's not their, theirs to make even make them look more even crazy and more even a tough guy. You know that's just how people do it, but. It wasn't uh, the Jarrell Smith guy. The guy that was that did it was dealt with, I think, two or three months after it happened. So, And you also think, you think a guy of Slim, uh, stat, like his whole status, like they was going to let somebody roam around the streets in New Orleans untouched. Come on now. Just think about it, man. Y'all got to just think, like, and use your logic. Like, the police and all that stuff, they – they're the last to know the streets know. So the streets know that was dealt with and that's the end of the story on that, man. But that's pretty much the the, the story of the of the whole Soldier Slim hit. And uh go ahead and smash that like button. Jump down in the comments if you feel like I missed anything, or just jump down there if you want to talk shit, because I know a lot of people like talking shit <laughs> as well. But man, I appreciate y'all love for checking out the video, man. Love.